Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not so honorable, I think. And uh, I'm not really used to and not good at speaking English to the Japanese audience. It kind of feel awkward, but uh, let, me, let me try it tonight. Uh, I really appreciate uh, Globus uh, inviting me over and giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, Japanese politics. I think for the last 20 years, the problem of this country is politics, and uh, well, more precisely, politicians. Uh, I, I think most of the politicians may not realize that they are their problem, but uh, I think they are. And uh, we, we really need to fix the current situation, and uh, I'm glad to talk about uh, how to get rid of this political stalemate and uh, what, can, what should we do to revitalize Japan. Let me, let me start talking about myself. I, I was born in 1963, a uh, year before the Tokyo Olympics. I went to, uh, up to high school in Japan. I went to uh, Keio University for about uh, two months. And I decided that uh, I want to go to the United States. Um, my father asked me, why do you want to go to the States for university? And I said, well, the future prime minister of Japan need to be able to speak to the president in English because the American president is not going to be able to speak in Japanese. He wasn't convinced. <laughs> he wasn't convinced at all. Um, he took me to, the, to an uh, event by an American embassy in Tokyo. And uh, I was trying to convince those American people to convince my father. So, so I was trying to tell them that I want to go to school in the United States, but our, my father don't agree with me, so could you please convince him that's a good idea? And almost every American or every, everyone in uh, American embassy in Tokyo said, or oh, you should go to continue, you know, you should go to KO, you should continue KO University, it's a good school. And uh, come to the United States for a graduate school. Um, so I sort of gave up. And uh, uh, I was a runner. And uh, I, I started running long distance from junior high and high school. And I was part of a KO track and field team. So I, I changed my mind. All right, let, let, me, let me try Hakone Ekiden instead of going to the United States. But on the way back home in the car, my father started talking about, oh, everyone was opposed to your idea. And I was going to say, shut up, but uh, I couldn't say that to my father, so I was like, quiet. And he said, well, because everyone's opposed to it, it may be a good idea. You want to go to the States? I don't know how he thinks that way, but uh, I said, yes. And uh, then he said, well, your English is not going to be good enough. Uh, I realized that. So I had a plan. Well, I'm going to go to high school in the United States for a year. I know they would take me as a senior. And then I would take SAT and TOEFL on the achievement test and apply for the United, you know, U.S. college. So I explained to my father, well, this is my plan. And uh, so he, he was saying, okay, you can go, but a quick KO before you go. My plan was to keep my place in KO and try it in the States, and if I couldn't do it, I'll come back. But uh, I forgot about my father went to Waseda. So he wasn't happy paying <laughs> for KO. And uh, well, if you're going to go to the States, you know, quit KO. So I got no choice. So I, I quit KO after two months and I went to the States. I went to a summer school in high school. And the first day at the summer school, uh, my roommate didn't show up. And uh, it was about uh, dinner time. I want to I wanna eat a dinner, but I don't know where to go. So I asked, where is the dining room? Well, it took me three try to, you know, ask an American, where is the dining room? My pronunciation wasn't too good. And uh, he told me, all right, you go up the hill, turn left, and I couldn't understand what he said. So I asked him again, 
and again. And uh, after three try, I, I gave up. So I couldn't eat the dinner the first day. And the second day, my roommate from Texas show up. So I said, <laughs> I, I don't think Texan eat the rice with chopsticks, but I didn't realize it. He didn't understand what I was trying to do. And he finally said, are you hungry? Yes, yes, I'm hungry. <laughs> and uh, that's how I started. And I got a high school in Connecticut uh, called the Southfield Academy. It's a prep school, the boarding school. And then I took SAT. I got a full mark on the math, but I, I got like 280 out of 800 in verbal. But uh, <laughs> uh, I tried the second time, I was a little better. And I got in Georgetown. I was uh, Patrick Ewins. I don't know if you follow the NBA, the Patrick Ewins at New York Knicks Center. Uh, he was my classmate. And uh, I graduated from Georgetown and uh, joined the Fuji Xerox. And then I joined the Nippon Tanshi, which is a small supplier of the electric component to <coughs> Toyota, Sony, GM, Ford, Nissan, things like that. And back in 1996, I ran for the parliament and uh, I got in. And uh, this is my 16th year, I think. Well, so that's the story of myself. And uh, I ran as Liberal Democratic Party back in 96. I'm, I'm still an um, ILDP member. And my friends, a lot of my friends in my age, was asking me, you're going to run as independent, right? I'm going to run as LDP candidate. And most of them didn't like the idea. Why do you want to run as LDP? And I said, well, I could run as independent. But then what am I going to do after I'm elected? I mean, you're going to be alone in the wilderness. And uh, you're not going to be doing much. So you have to be part of the political party in the Japanese parliamentary system. And then there was a Shin Shinto uh, back then. But uh, I, I, told, I remember telling them, uh, Shin Shinto may not last 10 years. You know, it's just a whole bunch of people uh, who have different ideas. It is a, it is a vehicle for election, but uh, I don't know if they are ideologically uh, sort of cohesive. So Shin Shinto is out. The communist and the socialist got a different idea, so they are out. Komeito got a different religion, so they are out. So that leaves LDP. So I don't think many of them are convinced but uh, I ran as LDP and got, got in. And uh, that's how my problem started, actually, if I look back. <laughs> um, the Liberal Democratic Party was founded back in 1955. That was way before I was born, so I don't remember, or I don't know, but... Uh, um, if you read a history book, 1955, the threat from communist Soviet was real. So we needed to protect Japan from communism or socialism. So LDP was founded, LDP was created to keep this country democratic, uh, market economy, and the alliance with the United States. And there was a socialist, that's a major opposition back then, there was a communist. And, uh, LDP supporters were those who don't want to make this country communist or socialism. So that's what LDP was all about. And back then, if you ask, if you ask LDP supporter, why do you support LDP? The answer was very simple. I believe in the market economy. I believe in democracy. I believe in alliance with the United States. That's why I support LDP. And that's the right answer. And LDP got uh, Ogasawara back from the United States, Okinawa back from the United States, made uh, Japan join the United Nations, uh, made uh, this economic growth. And uh, finally, finally, when the Cold War is over, when the wall of Berlin went down, I think LDP achieved uh, the goal of the party. Japan is going to be democratic state, it's going to be of free economy, 
and the alliance with the United States is pretty strong. So what LDP should have done when the Cold War was over was to celebrate its victory. We achieved the goal and have a celebration and disband the party because that's the end of it. Unfortunately, LDP continued. LDP sort of survived through the Cold War. Now the problem LDP faces is because of that and because the socialist is now almost disappearing, well, I don't know, Fukushima-san may be mad at me, but uh, it's disappearing anyway. There's a small <laughs> communist party still in the parliament, but you can almost ignore, sorry. So more than 90% member of the parliament believes in democracy, believes in market economy, believes in alliance with the United States. So way before, back in 60s, 70s, 80s, well, I believe in democracy, I believe in market economy, I believe in alliance with the United States, that's why I supported LDP. They could say that back then, but today, every other party says the same thing. If you ask DPJ, therefore, alliance with the United States after all, failure with Futenma, they still believe in the alliance with the United States. If you ask Watanabe Yoshimi of your party, he believes in market economy and believes in democracy and alliance and everything. Even Tachiagare, whatever, I don't know if they can stand up or not, but uh, <laughs> they believe in the same thing, right? Komeitos believes in the same thing. Um, I forgot the name of uh, Masudoe-san's party, but uh, He's also the same. And uh, new Ishihara's party will probably be the same, and Hashimoto, the governor Hashimoto believes in the same thing. So the problem of LDP is if you believe in democracy, market economy, alliance with the United States, why should I support LDP? Because there's a whole variety of party that says the same thing. So the problem of LDP is we need to redefine what LDP is all about. And we lost the general election two years ago. It's almost two and a half years ago. It was a godsend opportunity to start thinking about what we are about. Because if you are in the government, it's very difficult. After Prime Minister Koizumi left and Abe-san, Fukuda-san, and Aso-san took over, if you ask LDP, what is LDP? The answer we gave back then was, LDP is ruling party. <laughs> so now if you ask us, what's LDP? Well, we are opposition. That's it. If you're a ruling party, there's a reason to vote for ruling party. There's a reason to support ruling party. Because if you support ruling party, they will give you back the favor. If you give them vote, if you give them political contribution, they will give you back something. Or maybe a new regulation. Or maybe a new subsidy. Or maybe a new something. So there's a reason to support ruling party. And toward the end of the ASO government, that's what it was. But people are too unhappy with LDP policy or LDP scandal or failure of the past policies. They're so fed up with it. So they voted for DPJ. I don't, I don't think a lot of people believed in their manifesto. Now Tanigaki-san is pretty critical of manifesto, but I doubt how many people, so many people, actually read DPJ manifesto. So it was anyone but LDP. And now we are opposition. And there's not much reason to support opposition because even if you support opposition, you get no favor back from the opposition party. 
So what we have to do is, all right, we have to rethink what LDP is all about. We cannot say we are for democracy. I mean, we are for democracy. We are for market economy. We are for alliance with the United States. But that they will say the same thing. So we have to add something after that. And two years ago, I ran for the party leadership. Um, it was very clear that my theme was to let's <coughs> redefine LDP. And there was a Tanigaki-san. And he said, he, you know, let's sit in the middle, chu futan, chu fukushi. And I, I hated it. <laughs> I mean, that's not a banner, you know. You, you never know where is in the middle. I mean, it could be, I don't know. So I, my argument was we have, to, we have to show clearly where we are going. We're going that way. They're going that way. And we make compromises when we go this way. You cannot say we're going this way from the beginning. Then they will go that way and it will not be here. So we have to say, or let's not make compromise at the beginning. We have to say clearly, if we stand alone, we're going to go this way. But we're not alone. So we will make compromise. And it will be that way or this way or this way. And uh, we can't say we're going to go that way from the beginning. That was my criticism of Tanigaki-san. But I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. I started criticizing Mori-san. So a lot of media thought Taro Kono is attacking senior politicians. That wasn't the theme of my campaign. I was trying to redefine LDP. But uh, not, many, not many media people are interested in that. And uh, Taro Kono fighting with Morisan or uh, Machimura-san refused to shake hand with Taro Kono. That was uh, catchy. So my theme was kind of lost. Another, another mistake that I made was I only experienced the leadership election when we were in the government. So every news covers LDP leadership election. I mean, everyone's interested in, in the front page of the newspaper, it's LDP leadership campaign. But we, I forgot we were opposition. If you turn on the television, the first thing you see was Hatoyama-san making speech in New York City at the United Nations. It was Hatoyama-san's debut in the United States. And then the next thing was his wife's dress. And then there was a commercial. And then there was a weather forecast. And then LDP campaign for about 15 seconds, and that's it. I said, all right, let's redefine LDP as the party of economic growth. LDP will make this economy grow again. And that's what LDP is all about. Because there's a DPJ. The DPJ is based on the union. And because they are based on the union, they would have to be a big government party. They would have to collect money. And they will redistribute the money that they collect. The child benefit or the benefit from the farmers, or you, know, you name it. And since DPJ came into the power, our budget, annual budget, grow more than 10 trillion yen every year. So they are clearly of big government, of the party of redistribution. So they are, what they are trying to do is, here's a pizza, and you want to eat it. But uh, it wasn't cut equally. So the government will have a knife and cut it equally. Everyone will get the same you know, piece of the same size. That's what they are trying to do. So LDP, instead, will make the pizza bigger. So maybe the slice is different shape. But if you make the pizza bigger, every single one of you will get the bigger slice. So that has to be new LDP. That was my theme. So LDP will make 
economy grow, and they will try to redistribute the wealth. If you are try to redistribute the wealth, the economy won't grow. If you try to grow the economy, a map, there may be a, a little, I don't know, some make more money, some make bigger money, some make less, but everyone will be wealthier than today. And if we alternate the government between those two parties, that, that's how we're going to grow Japan. That was my theme. And in order to grow the economy in Japan, well, it's kind of your hands are tied today. I mean, because of this government deficit, you're going to be able to, you're not going to be able to spend a lot of money to stimulate the economy. There won't be a fiscal stimulus package. The interest rate is sort of all time law. So your monetary policy is pretty limited. So all you can do, all you can rely is to deregulate the economy, create much freer, much fairer market, and give it to people. So anyone who try hard, who sweat more, anyone who take more risk, anyone who got a better idea, will win, and they will lead the economy, and they will lead to the economic growth. So let's deregulate. And in order to deregulate, we need to create, we need to make the government smaller, smaller in terms of number of the bureaucrats. Well, if you reduce the number of bureaucrats, you pay less to them, and that's a big save for the government. If you reduce the number of bureaucrats, you cannot continue to have the same number of regulation because there'll be less people handling the regulation. If you reduce the number of the bureaucrats, they will, they will have to deregulate. Otherwise, they would have to be working 24 hours a day and that's not possible. So reducing the number of the bureaucrats is the first key and that's a big key. And then you need to reduce the size of the budget of the government. Now we are wasting a lot of money. Well, wasting may not be the good word. You have to, you have to give the money back to the people because the government cannot efficiently spend the money by definition. If you give it back to the people, if you give it back to the industry, they will maximize the efficiency. And that's good, that's better. So in terms of the number of the bureaucrats, in terms of the number of the budget, or size of the budget, you have to reduce it. And you have to give power to the local government, devolution. Um, think about it, Several, some years ago, until some years ago, every single grammar school, the elementary school, had a same, height for the ceiling. Hokkaido and Okinawa had the same height for the ceiling. Why? Because Ministry of Education said so. But there's no reason behind it. You have to have certain centimeter in the classroom goes back to major era when they had a stove and they burned the coal. You have to have a certain height in the classroom to keep the student healthy. But no one, no one burned the coal in today, so that doesn't apply anymore. So you have to give freedom to the local government and let them do whatever they want. I mean, if Tokyo used yen and uh, Osaka used something else, that's a little difficult. So like monetary policy or defense or foreign affairs or some, Something that central government has to do, has to be done by central government. But anything that central government don't have to do should be given to the local government. And they would manage better, and they would manage more efficiently. So we need to reduce the size of central government vis-a-vis -vis local government. 
And by doing it, the market get more freedom. And each of you have more freedom to do whatever you want. And that's how we're going to grow the economy in Japan. When I say that, quite a few people actually ask me, what about, uh, say, uh, R&D? Shouldn't government spend the money to, for like science or technology or those things? And I said, well, for the basic science, yes, because it doesn't have economic return. But uh, there are quite a few people, quite a lot of people, who has, who thinks the government should take initiative for like computer or uh, I don't know semiconductors or some computer software or whatever. And uh, a lot of people thinks it's important that government take initiative. People keep asking me, what is the next industry that will lead this country? Is it going to be environment? Is it going to be energy? Or is it going to be healthcare? And I say, how the hell should I know? I mean, if the government says, all right, the next industry is going to be energy, or next industry for this country is healthcare, if the government could do this, why has communism failed so badly? The history tell you the government not going to know what is the next industry for this country. Every single one of the communist country failed, well, except China, but well, China has a communist government, but uh, it's a capitalistic country now. So the government not going to know what this country should do in terms of finding new engines. It's up to the private sector. It's up to the free enterprise. It's up to the free people that they will try a whole bunch of ideas. And if you try a whole bunch of ideas, something will win. Something will flourish. And something will lead the country to economic growth, and it's not the government. So your job is to limit the spending by the government. It's your job to deregulate the government so that people will have freedom in the market. There's an organization called uh, Keidanren, and a lot of people say a lot, a lot of people say it's a sort of a business. Uh, organization. It represents the Japanese business. I disagree. If, if you listen to the head of Keidanren speak, he's only talking about how to protect their interest. They are not representing the whole business in Japan. Keidanren is trying to protect their own interest. I think we need to abolish that. What we need to do is to create fair market. We need to create efficient market. We need to create market where anyone can come in and try their idea. That's what we need. But what Keidanren is trying to do is build a wall around their market and try to exclude the people who wants to come in. And that's not, that shouldn't represent the Japanese business community. We need some business leader who can speak for the entire business, not just for his own company, not just for his own industry. And that's what we need. Right now, if you have, say, a million dollar and come to Japan, try to invest, we have so many regulation and the million dollar will not go for investment. You have to spend certain amount of money to go around the regulation. 
So the million dollar you took when you were actually investing it, or maybe 80% or 70% of million dollar will go into the investment. But in certain country, if you bring the million dollar, 99% of the million dollar will go to your investment. And that's what we need. That's market we need to create. And if we can do that, we can attract a lot of money from all over the world. We can attract a lot of people. We can attract a lot of information. We can attract a lot of goods to this country. And this is how we're going to grow this country. And the LDP should focus on that. LDP is the party, the political party in Japan that would try to achieve that. That was the theme of my campaign. And uh, Tanigaki-san said, let's sit in the middle. And I lost. And uh, I really, well, I don't know. I was ahead in the public opinion poll. So I thought I was really going to win. And uh, I was actually talking to my friend, who should be my secretary general. And uh, I was asking my friend, should I ask this person the day before actually I win or after I have won? And he thought about it. Or maybe it's better after you have won. So I waited and I lost. <laughs> I'm kind of happy I didn't ask him before. So right now, if you ask LDP, you're not going to hear the clear definition of what LDP stands for. I mean, there are a lot of people who oppose to TPP in LDP. There are a lot of people who oppose to immigration. There are a lot of LDP members who actually oppose to opening up the market to the foreign countries. So what is LDP? It's still unclear. Well, right now, what is LDP? We would say, we are the party which is not a DPJ. <laughs> well, it may attract some votes if there's no third party coming up. But once Hashimoto-san starts a new party, if Watanabe-san joins with Hashimoto-san, or maybe Ishihara-san, or a whole bunch of people, uh, getting up together and create the third party, then you would have alternative. You don't have to vote for the party, which is not a DPJ. You could, you could vote for the third party. So I don't know if LDP can win the next general election or not. I think we should stop asking for general election, and I think we should start talking about the policy issues. I mean, think about it. All right, if Nora-san had a crazy idea that he, he, you know, he started thinking suddenly, he can win the general election. So he suddenly dissolved the parliament, called for general election. Of course, he will lose. So LDP get the majority, right? So Tanigaki-san become the prime minister. Think about what's going to happen. DPJ will have a vote of non-confidence against each minister in the upper house, one by one they will refuse to pass the authorization for the government deficit. So we're not going to be able to start borrowing money. And then the prime minister would have to say, all right, I will resign if you pass those three bills. Are we going to do this again? Well, that's what's going to happen. So what I've been asking Tanigaki-san is, all right, Tanigaki-san, we are opposition. So why don't we tie the hand of upper house now. Why don't we change the law? Why don't we change the parliamentary law to outlaw vote of non-confidence in upper house? Because it doesn't help anyone. Why don't we say if the government passed the budget, we will agree all the budget related bills and authorization for the government borrowing. If the budget passes, why don't we give it to them and they can rule the country? If we, if we propose it as an opposition, DPJ will definitely agree with us. We give Nora-san a year and a half. He can rule freely. 
But then we're going to have a general election. And if we win, we can rule the country. It's not better than becoming ruling party but not able to deliver anything. Then what's the point of being a politician? What's the point of making government if the government are not able to deliver anything? So why don't we start tying our hands in upper house now so that we can do, we can rule the country after the general election? The answer from the senior politician is, Kono-san, don't worry about it. You're too young. Once we got the majority in lower house, we will ask DPJ upper house member, come join us, and there will be majority in upper house. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> if you can do it, Ozawa-san has already done it. And even Ozawa-san is not going to be able to do this. So we're not going to be able to do this. So it's going to be a hang parliament. It's going to be a twisted parliament. And that will create a stalemate. And nothing is going to move on in this country. And that's the failure of the politics. So we need to have clear banner, clear direction for the political party. And I think we need the political party of economic growth, which I believe should be LDP, and the political party of redistribution, which I believe DPJ, because they are the labor union-based party. And we will alternate. If the economy is stagnant, it's definitely LDP that will lead economic growth. And then if we grow the economy, and if there is disparity in society, maybe people would choose a party of redistribution. And they will make, try to make the society m more equally. But then the economy will slow down. And then we will go back to the government. And that's how we should move forward. And that's number one. In order to do that, you have to let the prime minister rule the country. I mean, you're, once your opposition was, your job is to start debate. Your job is to present alternative to the people. And if your alternative is good, people would say, why don't you get that idea? And the government would do that. So we need to give power to the DPJ. When, when I was chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House of Representatives before the general election under ASO government. I was talking to ranking member of DPJ. We have problem because our foreign minister, our foreign minister has to come to the Committee of Foreign Affairs, Committee on Defense, Committee on Terrorism, Committee on Abduction, Committee on Iraq War, or something like that. He has to come to the five committee in lower house. He has to come to the full committee upper house. So he won't be able to travel. He can go abroad only on weekends. And that's not a foreign minister. That's an interior minister. So I was talking to a ranking member of DPJ. Why don't you start saying you don't need a foreign minister for certain treaties that every party is going to agree there are treaties that everyone is going to agree, like a treaty on the postal service, or a treaty on double taxation, treaty on you know, whatever. There are, I mean, 90% of a treaty is unanimous. And uh, if it's unanimously approved, you don't need a foreign minister coming to take questions, because you're not going to ask the question on the treaties. So why don't you propose that? And in six months, there's going to be a general election. According to the public opinion poll, you're going to be in the government. We're going to be opposition. Your foreign minister can travel much freer. So why don't you say that? I will support it as a chairman. And he refused it. He said, no, foreign minister has to come to every single treaty debate. And that's why Genba-san is not able to travel today. So we, LDP, shouldn't make the same mistakes. Our upper house colleague is taking DPJ minister one by one in upper house. And they can do that to our minister. And this is a big mistake for political parties. The other issue 
that creates the political stalemate is there's no debate in the Japanese parliament. Well, you might say, well, you saw the debate on television today. That's not a debate. That's just a question. You can ask minister, but the minister are not allowed to ask you questions. So you are in a safe position. You know you're, gonna be, you're not going to be shot. And you can keep shooting the ministers. And that's not fair. And they're not debating. They were just asking stupid questions. We, we need to create an environment where you can debate freely. And if you vote in the House of Representatives, it's, easy, it's either unanimous consent or speaker will ask you to rise if you support the bill. But no one actually counting how many people are standing up. There's no bird watcher counting those who stand up. The speaker said, please rise if you vote for this bill and you stand up and that's it. Because before the plenary session start, representative of each party will come to the speaker. My party will support bill number one, number three, and number four, and oppose bill number two. That goes on the record. Some years ago, when Mr. Watanuki was the speaker of the house, there was a unanimous consent that speaker asked. I think it was about uh, Suzuki Muneo-san. I think we were trying to ask him to resign or something like that. And the speaker asked for the unanimous consent. It was supposed to be unanimous consent, but I didn't agree with that. So I stood up and raised my hand and shouted, I oppose. And he said, well, I see no one opposing the bill. <laughs> we <laughs> so what he does is he actually reads the scenario. He doesn't really pay attention. Well, he actually knows that I'm standing up and shouting and I'm, I'm, I'm not giving unanimous consent, but he doesn't care because that's what in the scenario. And you don't really count. So there was a delegation from Chinese People's Congress and they were watching that. And after that, we had a dinner and this Chinese government official was telling me, or oh, Kono-san, I think you should run your parliament more democratic way. I don't want to hear that from you. <laughs> but that's what it is. So the Japanese parliament is just like Olympus. The governance is failing. There's no debate. There's no parliamentary rule. It's just a just like a play, it's like a charade. And there's no real debate in the parliament. And that's how you fail. I mean, if, think about it. If your board is not actually debating where your company is going, your company is gonna be facing a big problem sooner or later. And that's what, it, what we are. The Japanese parliament, we're not debating the issues. For the first 10 years, I was elected in 96, and for the first 10 years, until 2006 or maybe five, I never spoke in the plenary session because my turn didn't come. And when I said that to colleagues in, I don't know, European countries or you know, other democratic countries, they think I'm weird. I mean, how can you not speaking up in the plenary session for 10 years. Well, I'm not the only one. The class of 96 of LDP, most of us never had a chance to speak in the plenary session for the first 10 years. And they think we are strange. I think we are. So we need to change the political system. We need to change the political party. We need to change the rule of the parliament. And we need to change the way we debate or not debate in the parliament. And if we have the real political debate, 
there's a solution to all the problem we are facing. I mean, everyone agree what are the problem. And in order to solve this, this is a solution. There are a lot of proposals. All we have to do is just take one by one and apply. And we are not able to do this because of the politics, because of the parliamentary system. So that's where stopping Japan. And it's not only in the parliament. Well, I'll give you one example. Um, I say one example, I'm just thinking which one. All right, I'll give you one difficult one. Um, the China is growing in terms of economy, or in terms of military, it's growing. So, I mean, we have alliance with the United States. I mean, it's a natural thing. But if you think about China, Japan's natural ally would be definitely Russia. If Russia and Japan become friends, establish a good relationship, we could put pressure on China from both ways. So Russia should be our natural ally vis-a-vis -vis China. But if you look at the Russo-Japanese relationship, it's not good. Well, the major reason is the Northern Territory, those four islands. The Japanese government has been asking that Russia will give those four islands back to Japan for the last 60 years, and we got none back. We continue talking about Northern Territory, and we continue talking about getting four islands back. Is it going to happen? If it's communist Soviet, maybe. Because if you convince the Soviet leader, he will sign a treaty, and he could deliver. But Russia has become democratic. The democratic Russia, even if the president agreed to give four islands back to Japan, will Russian parliament pass the treaty? Will Russian parliament ratify the treaty to yield Russian land to Japan? It's not plausible. We need to make some kind of compromise between Japan and Russia that both sides would agree to. And if you ask Russian government, give us back those four islands, well, yeah, Japanese people will support it, but will Russian parliament support it? So we need to come up with some kind of creative ideas to convince Russian parliament as well as Japanese parliament this is better than the current situation. That, I don't think, cannot be give us four islands back. It's somewhere between two and four. And plus, some kind of very creative, some special district ideas so that both countries would benefit, both people be happy. But the Japanese politician for the last 60 years have been just saying, well, Russia stole the island. We want those four islands back. As long as you say it, no one's going to shoot you from behind. Once you start talking about, that's not going to happen. Let's make compromise. Everyone's going to start shooting you. You get shot from behind. But if you continue talking about four islands for another, say, 200 years, will they come back? If you continue talking about it for 200 years and you get the four islands back, I would agree. But I don't think it's going to happen. It's going to be a common, I mean, it's going to be a democratic Russia. And they're going to be more nationalistic. And it's going to be more difficult. If you wait 10 more years, it will be much more difficult. If you wait 20 more years, it's going to be very difficult. So as long as, long as Putin is the leader, he, is, he may be strong enough to convince the Russian parliament. 
say, all right, this is a good idea. But even Putin won't be able to convince Russian parliament that giving four islands back to Japan is a good idea. So we need to start talking about compromise. But I don't, I don't think anyone is ready to do that. But it's politicians' job to start talking to Japanese people. All right, we have to change the course. We have to make compromise. It is national interest of this country to have better relationship with Russia because number one, it will give pressure to China. It will give us alternative source of energy, say Sahalin, the natural gas from Sahalin. Well, we will, it will give us bigger opportunity for investing in Siberia. So if you think about it, it's a, it's a good idea to have better relationship with Russia. In the long run, it will be better. My office invited the former prime ministers and the foreign minister of Baltic country and Finland and Norway. Uh, those are the country who had a territory problem with Soviet Union. And every single one of them told us, well, no one's going to be sympathizing with Japan because you're just asking something, you're not going to get it. The territorial issue is it's more domestic than foreign. Your job is to convince your people this is a good idea to make treaty this way and not asking more. And if you can do it, that's more than half solved. And uh, I don't think the Japanese politicians are trying to communicate with Japanese people the current situation. And uh, I think we're going to be doing this. There are a lot, of, a lot of things that the politicians need to be talking. I mean, if you, if you watch the morning program by Mino Monta-san, he, he, he always starts talking about, well, the government has to cut the waste first, or you have to reduce the number of politicians first. Otherwise, the tax shouldn't be raised. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I 100% I, I agree with him. But, but our pension system is failing. Our pension system has so much money, supposed to have so much money, 140 trillion yen or something. But in reality, we don't have that much. We probably have 110 trillion yen or something. The 30 trillion yen that's supposed, supposed to be there has been gone. If you wait, then the money in the pensions deposit will be going down much faster. Those who are receiving pension today will not suffer from that. But the future generation suffers very much. So if you think about the future, you should raise consumption tax and give the tax money to the pension system. You need to change it now. You cannot wait. Yes, it is a good idea to cut the waste. It is very good to cut the government waste. You may be better off reducing the number of the politician, but you need to deal with your pension system today, now. Not tomorrow, but today. So whenever Mino Montasan talking about government waste, yes, everyone agree with it. That's true. But if you're a politician, you should start talking to your people. Yes, he is right, but it is more right to talk about pension system now. Because by 2075, you're going to be supporting each one of you will be supporting one senior citizen. Right now, it's three to one. In 2075, it's one to one. And the current pension system is going to be falling apart even before that. So we need to change it. And the, it's politicians' job. Yes, it's true, but there are issues that you need to do it. Unfortunately, it's not working that way. 
um, politicians tend to blame that on the media. I tend to do that. Maybe true, <laughs> but I think the politicians need to be start talking about it first, and the media need to follow. Right now, there's a. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about this, and uh, there are two issues. One is uh, collective responsibility in the parliamentary system. I voted for extension of parliamentary session last July, and. Uh, Tanigaki-san didn't like it. So I resigned from all the party posts, and uh, I got a no post in LDP. If, if the government introduced a bill, the government party, and the member of the government party are expected to vote along with the government. But the basic rule of the parliamentary system is if you're in the government, if you're a politician, and if you're in the government, you have to support every single one of the government policy. But if you're in the ruling party, but if you're not in the government, you don't have to. So the government job is to convince member of the ruling party to support government policy because it's good. That's the first thing they have to do. But here in this country, the very strange thing is, if you're a member of the ruling party, you are expected to vote for the government all the time. If you go to Westminster in London, more often than not, the ruling party, some of the ruling party are voting against the government. And they don't get kicked out of the party or anything. Because he's not in the he or she is not in the government. Same thing should happen to the opposition. If you're in the leadership, if you're in the leadership, you have to support the party policy 100%. But if you're opposition, but not in the leadership, the leadership of the opposition party has to convince you to support the leadership because it's good for you, it's good for the party, it's good for the country. That thing doesn't happen. So, the government come up with any bill, and they expect ruling party people would support it. So there's no real debate, because they don't have to convince you. And that's, that's bad. It's just like North Korea. You have to support anything Kim Sun says. And that's not what it should be in the parliamentary system. And uh, we. We need more variety of people joining politics. I mean, if you look at the local politics, it's very difficult to recruit people running for their city council or prefectural assembly. More and more people, I don't want to go into politics. I mean, the politician has been bashing, and you don't want to be, I mean, it's, it's good to bash someone, but it's not good to be bashed. The pay is not good, except like the, some major city has a huge salary, and uh, it's a good business. But if you go to the average city council, the pay is pretty low. So why should I give up with this job and get almost voluntary jobs? I think you need to pay well. You can, you can reduce the number of the assembly people, but you have to pay them well to attract better people coming into the local politics. And then they will eventually come to the national politics. It's, it's, we definitely need to recruit and uh, we, we definitely need to support them in the campaign. Even the LDP, if you wanted to be the candidate, and if you become candidate, it's basically you are on your own. You have to finance your campaign. And how many people can finance this campaign? 
you, you never know you're going to be elected or not. If you're 100% going to be elected, you may borrow money and uh, just you know, finance your campaign. But you never know. The chances are 50-50. So we need to recreate a political party so that the party would finance your campaign. Fi party will provide a manifesto. And the party will give you freedom to debate, freedom whether or not to support the leadership or the party, and create the better debate. That's what we need. And all the problems we are facing in Japan today are political. Well, there are some which is not a political, but the major problem is the political issues. And if we change the political system here in whatever way to enhance the debate, enhance their governance, I think this country will be better. And uh, I would like to start from LDP. Uh, a lot of people ask me, why don't you leave LDP? But uh, I want to give another try at the leadership of LDP and uh, start changing it from here. Sorry, I spoke too much. I'll stop here and uh, I, will, uh, I will give a chance to ask me any questions later that you want to ask. Thank you very much. Mr. Kono, uh, thank you very much for your, how to say, very passionate speech. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to be here. I used to work in Hiratsuka City. So uh, Kono-san is a very big hero in Hiratsuka City. Uh, all the, the big events, Kono-san will give uh, a speech. And uh, he was the president and chairman of uh, Shonan Berumare which is a football club. <laughs> and uh, my company was a sponsor of uh, Shonan Berumare. So Thank you. Um, we met a lot in Hiratsuka Stadium. That's where uh, Shonan Berumare played football. So uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming here. And uh, I'd like to start the dialogue. Uh, I'd like to take about 25 minutes for the dialogue. And uh, I'd like to uh, divide the dialogue maybe in three parts. First part, I would like to do, ask you about your recent activities. The second part, uh, I'd like to ask a little bit about your political view you mentioned today. And uh, the third part, uh, if I may, uh, because we have lots of global students and uh, a lot of audience, if you can send a message to maybe our university as well as the audience today. So that's the structure I have in mind. First, uh, Kono-sensei, uh, Kono-san, uh, can you start talking about your recent activities? Uh, looking at your blog, you've been traveling quite extensively abroad. Uh, I, I saw a Twitter comment how cold it is in Moscow mm -hmm. and uh, how busy you are in Washington. Uh, can you start from your recent sure. activities? Yes. Um, I went to Moscow last December. Um, it's mainly to talk about uh, Russo-Japanese relationship. After Suzuki Muneo-san was arrested, there have been few politicians in Japan who really wants to be involved in the Russo-Japanese bilateral relationship. And uh, some Russian politicians were worried about it. And uh, he asked me to come to Moscow. Um, my grandfather went to Kremlin, um, and uh, he was the sort of first one to involved in the bilateral relationship between Russia and Japan. And uh, he was the first politician to start talking about the territorial issue. And uh, I, th I think we need to follow up and we need to finish it. I mean, that was more than half a century ago, and it's still left open. So. And uh, Washington uh, was, uh, I was invited by the Richard, Mr. Richard Armitage. Uh, there were a lot of issues like, uh, he, he says, he said that there are a lot of F wars in the bilateral relationship, Futema, <laughs> F, F35. And uh, the, another, another issue uh, that not widely mentioned in media, but uh, it's brewing is uh, reprocessing by South Korea. Um, South Korea 
wants to reprocess the spent fuel to get the plutonium out. And uh, Japan is the only country which has no nuclear weapon and does reprocessing. And South Korea, I mean, the South Korea has a treaty with the United States that's going to expire 2014. And they have to renew their nuclear pact. And uh, South Korea is demanding, if Japan can do the reprocess, why can't South Korea? And the uh, United States worried about, if South Korea starts getting plutonium out, it's going to be a nuclear race in the Korean Peninsula. And uh, South Africa is going to follow, follow uh, South Korea, because South Korea wants to reprocess too. So once U.S. allows South Korea to reprocess spent fuel, then it will be very difficult to refuse South Africa to do the same. And if those two countries start doing it, it will be very difficult for another country to, and then there will be a plutonium all over. And uh, we, we have been, well, we, we are, we have right to reprocess, but uh, now we have 45 tons of plutonium. The plutonium we have in Japan is larger than those plutonium on the nuclear arsenal in the United States. So we don't really need to reprocess, and uh, we, cannot, we cannot develop fast breeder reactor. So even if we get the plutonium out of a spent fuel, there's no way we can consume it. So it would be better if we stop reprocessing so that U.S. and Japan could convince South Korea that it's a bad idea and then stop the nuclear race right there. That was the hidden agenda. Thank you. We, we, we are lucky to hear <laughs> the real discussion in the United States. Um, Kono-san has written a book on a nuclear policy. So those of you, if you can check Amazon, uh, there's a book out last fall mm -hmm. about, about nuclear policy. So uh, if you're in interested in nuclear policy, please check maybe Amazon or Lactem Books. Um, you mentioned about South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in South Africa uh, last May. Uh, I was taking part in the regional conference of Davos mm -hmm. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, there's lots of new movements in Africa. China is uh, creating a lot of, how to say, uh, monetary assistance to Africa to gain the minerals. Um, we, we did have a lot of rebellion in the northern Africa last year. How do you see the situation in Africa currently? Well, some part of Africa is growing. and Some part of Africa got a very corrupt government. And uh, we, have, we have spent a lot of foreign aid in Africa because the Japanese government has tried to get in the UN Security Council and uh, votes in Africa matter. And that's why we spend so much money. But uh, I, don't, I don't think Security Council is an issue anymore. And uh, I don't think our government could afford that much foreign aid. So I think we eventually have to reduce the amount of foreign aid and encourage the Japanese private sector to start investing, start going to Africa. It's not only Africa, like uh, Iraq. The northern, northern part of Iraq is pretty safe. And there are a lot of uh, Chinese and Korean company investing in Iraq, but the Japanese private sector uh, just not willing to go. And that makes difference. Uh, the Chinese government's giving a lot of foreign aid to African country, but the way they give foreign aid, you know, the locally, it's being criticized pretty heavily. And it's, well, if the Chinese government foreign money goes, I mean, the government money goes, the private sector follows, and that makes them strong. And I think we need to encourage the Japanese private sector taking risks, not, not just a physical risk, but the country risk, to invest in a growing economy. Thank you much. Uh, you mentioned about LDP, uh, largening the, the pizza pie. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that 
uh, in some countries, a million dollar invested, uh, 99% would be an actual investment. Um, if we look in Asia, there are many countries or uh, regions that are lowering corporate tax, giving incentives. Mm -hmm. Uh, Japanese corporate tax is quite high. Um, as you mentioned, there's lots of administrative procedures that, that require some, some money. Um, how do you see uh, Japan uh, enlarging the pizza pie? Uh, you, you mentioned about deregulation, I, I agree with you, but um, there's constant competition between Hong Kong, between Singapore, uh, between Vietnam, between China. Would even Japanese companies are currently making a lot of foreign direct investment mm -hmm. in Asia. Mm -hmm. Would we be able to invite, let's say, a US company, a European company, an Indian company to Japan? How, how do you see the, the link? Well, in order to attract the investment, um, you have to be changing. You have to be moving. I mean, the size of the economy is quite huge still, but uh, this huge economy is not moving, and that's a problem. And uh, I think we, we, are, we are losing population. It's natural for us to open the labor market, take immigrants in, but a lot of people are afraid. When uh, there was a Koizumi government, we tried to create a financial center in Tokyo. The first thing I was told is, Kono-san, in order to create a financial center in Tokyo, the first thing you know you need is English-speaking nani. Because there'll be a, a lot of professionals coming from all over the world. The first thing they pay attention is if they could have English-speaking nani. And then good school that their kids can go to. And it's very difficult in Japan to get an English-speaking nani. So you're not going to be able to pop the financial center. And that was true. So there's a very stupid regulations. You know, those Indonesian nurse has to take exam in English. And if she fails once, she has to go home. I mean, that's crazy. We need them. So I think we need to really deregulate and uh, just abolish those crazy rules so that people should be willing to come. I mean, a lot of Asian people still willing to come to Japan and, uh, you know, wanted to work, wanted to live, wanted to, you know, experience in Tokyo or in Japan and let them come in. And uh, I, th I think that we have been trying to uh, issue tourist visa to Chinese people and they are giving us more business. And before that, the government was very strict. And uh, we, we had to really put effort to loosen up. And uh, we, th that's, that's one example. We, we need to get rid of those regulations that is not necessary. And there are so many of them. And uh, give, give you know, people opportunity to do, try something new. Thank you. Um, we heard from Kono-san about uh, how he was treated when he was first elected to LDP. Uh, that story is, is quite similar to uh, how I felt when I entered a, a big Japanese company, a Soho Shosha. Uh, most people said, Nakamura, you're too young to, to make a presentation. Uh, why don't you serve tea? Why don't you, uh, you know, in my days it was cutting TEDx, uh, not, not email. Um, but um, in order for Japanese, let's say, um, economy to change. You, you said changing will enlarge in the pie. Um, and uh, how, how, how can we make that movement? I, I mean, you've tried before, uh, your message is clear, uh, but um, in the business world, uh, we have old companies, but we do have young new companies that will take over, mm -hmm. let's say, the old companies. Uh, and in, in that way, I think change is brought in the business world. But in the political world, uh, and you, you mentioned about making, tying your hands beforehand, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, um, or making some compromise, talking about reality, let's say, with Russia, about the, the four, four islands. 
but how, how can we bring change to the political arena? How, how, how do you see that? Um, general election two years ago, I thought that was a great opportunity because we were devastated. Everyone saw the LDP is out. So it is a good opportunity for us to change the party. And that's how Tony Blair created the new labor how David Cameron came up with a new conservative party. And uh, LDP was just about to start change. And the mistakes we made, or mistakes the voter made, was we sort of won upper house election. So a lot of senior politicians thought, hey, we, you know, the DPJ is doing so bad. You know, we just have to sit and wait. It will come back. So the, all the momentum was lost. The sense of a crisis was lost. If we had lost the upper house election as well, then you know, the party would have gone crazy. You know, we, we're going to be on the verge of disappearing. We've got to do everything to change the party to get back. But uh, because of, we, we didn't even win. DPJ got more votes than LDP, actually. We did well in the countryside, so we got the more seats. But actually, if you count the number of votes, DPJ got more. But we thought we won, and we lost the sense of a crisis. And uh, all the senior dinosaurs thought they could survive. <laughs> you know, they, they, they were just about to give up, and they were just about to retire. But after the upper house election, everyone said they would continue. So the crisis will create the change. And the DPJ will lose big in the next general election. And they will change. If LDP goes back as it is, we're going to be failed again. And then I don't think we have a second chance. So we are now really facing the crisis. But uh, I mean, the crisis will create the change. I, I think that's everywhere, not only politics, but business as well. And uh, maybe um, LDP should have chosen you as a leader. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Kono-san, I'd like to get into some of your personal policies. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if I uh, understood it correctly, uh, before the general election or, or by the general election, you were working on the social um, security reform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that activity, you are even working with uh, DJP. Yes, Okada-san. Okada-san. Okada and and others, yes, yes. yes. Um, what is your social reform? And what is it that you want to achieve? Um, well, we have a demographic problem, number one. Uh, for the pension system, uh, we, we, we got to change it. I mean, right now, I mean, you support your senior citizens, and three of, three of you are supporting one senior citizens. And by 2075, it'll be one to one. So your premium will be tripled, and no one can afford to pay it. So you gotta change the system that you save in the pension fund while you're working, and when you retire, your pension will come up from that. And that's, that's what we need. And uh, for the medical, I mean, we, we just, uh, we, we just uh, spending too much, or we're not, we're not getting enough input. Um, I'll give you one example. Right now, the medical insurance will pay for those brain dead. If you are brain dead, and if your family wanted to continue uh, the medication, the insurance will continue to pay for it. But, uh, and that's very expensive. Is it the right policy? I mean, if financially you can afford to do it, maybe. But the financial resource is very limited. So you have to give priority. And, uh, you know, we, I mean, that's going to be a very hard cut. And, uh, I mean, there are some people who don't believe the brain death is death. 
Okay, so there's going to be a big argument, but you have to start arguing. You have to start debate. The resource is limited, and it has to be, you know, prioritized. And if you're brain dead, I mean, your priority should be the lowest. And most likely, the current situation, the public funds not going to be able to pay for you. So that kind of resource allocation is necessary, and the politicians shouldn't be afraid to start debate. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, if I may, I, I would like to ask some personal questions mm -hmm. about uh, Kono Taro-san, not, not, not necessarily as a politician, mm -hmm. and uh, would like to focus. Um, a lot of people say you are innovative, you are courageous, you are bold, and uh, approach why uh, Kono-san is Kono-san. So I'd like to get into a little bit of personal aspect in Kono-san. Um, Kono-san, um, how come in, in a very, how, how to say, a traditional LDP, uh, you can speak f what you believe? You know, you, you have been known for speaking directly uh, what you believe, whether it's nuclear policy, whether it's about Russia, whether it's about pension. Um, how to say, uh, forming a, a study group with uh, DJP uh, politicians. Uh, you, you have been taking very bold and innovative actions. Um, where does your courage or boldness co comes from? Um, I, I don't think, I don't think I like to wait in the queue. I mean, in old LDP system, if you're elected five times, you're eligible for the ministers. And if you're elected six times, you definitely expect to be the minister. But uh, I mean, that's kind of boring, isn't it? I mean, you can do, you can do a lot more. And uh, I like the Koizumi-san system because he chose the minister not according to the seniority. Um, so I, I thought if you wait in the queue, uh, you may become the minister, but in the meantime, your time is wasted. And uh, I, could have, I could have done different things, but I chose to be the politician. So while I'm in the parliament, I wanted to, I wanted to do whatever I could do, as much as I could do. Uh, that's number one. Number two. Um, I, when I when I first ran for the parliament back in '96, my majority in the election was twenty some twenty some thousand votes. I think it was less than thirty thousand. But since then, my majority increased to over hundred thousand votes in uh, USA election. So, if you are strong in the camp election, you don't have to worry about. Like for TPP, the JA came to every single LDP parliament to sign the petition against the TPP. And I refused because I'm for TPP. And uh, I could say no without hesitation. But if your majority is like 100 or 200, you need their votes. And then I know my colleague who support TPP but signed the petition against the TPP. He had to do it because otherwise he may not be able to re-elect it. So doing, doing well in election will give you more leeway to move more freely. And uh, I was very lucky. Thank you. Um, you mentioned about your LDP election. And you said um, you were choosing a direction, mm -hmm. whereas Tanigaki-san was choosing somewhere in the middle. Now, when you choose a direction, what is your, let's say, uh, a compass? How do you define or how do you decide what, what is right, what is correct? Uh, can you share how you come up to, let's say, a certain direction? Whether it's a policy, whether it's your personal decision, um, some people say, you know, uh, let's say you, you said you spent your youth in the United States. Some people will say my decision is based on the Christian Bible. 
that's one way mm -hmm. to, to make a decision. Uh, in your case, how do you come up with the direction or, or, or a rightness of your decision? <laughs> it's pretty difficult. Um, for my personal thing, if you're in doubt, do it. I mean, I, I wasn't sure if going to the United States was a good idea or not. I mean, uh, I, I thought I could come back to KO, but my father told me to quit. So if I don't get into the university in the United States, I got no way back to come back. So I was a little hesitating, <laughs> but uh, if, if you don't do it, you will be regretting, you know, till pretty late. And if you do it and failed, well, you convince yourself at least. So when, when you are in doubt, just do it. That was when I first ran for the parliament back in 1996, or ran for the party leadership two years ago, or when I voted against the party last year. If you're in doubt, you, you just simply do it. And uh, well, I think that's the only way to convince yourself that you did right thing or wrong thing. If you don't do it, you never know. So, so that's how I make decisions. I don't know, I made the wrong decisions many times, but uh, I know which one was wrong. Um, you are known for providing your uh, one third of your liver to your father. Yes. Uh, that's a very hard decision to make personally. Mm -hmm. um, what was on your mind at that time? Um, that was 2002, April 2002. It's been almost 10 years. And back then, it was very simple. Donor, don't die. And your liver, even if you cut the third of it, it will grow back in six months. So I thought I got nothing to lose, and I did it. Then a year later, a donor died in Kyoto University in operation. Uh, liver actually grow back in six months, but uh, a lot of donor get uh, complication. Uh, almost 12% of donor have some kind of problem after the operation. Half of the donor will have some kind of problem. I didn't hear that before the operation. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't know it because the doctor was into you know, curing the patients. But the doctor didn't really pay attention to the donors. So there was no survey after the operation what happens to the donors. So the doctor didn't have information. And just about, I was going, you know, undergoing the operation. The doctors start thinking about the donors and they start surveying. And the first survey tell you, uh, one eighth of donor have a severe problem. Half of donor have some kind of problem and the donor could die. Uh, I wouldn't do it today, <laughs> but uh, back in 2002, I didn't know, so I said I couldn't lose and did it. Um, you mentioned that uh, debate is very important, mm -hmm. and uh, at Globus University, all our classes are done in an interactive style, so whether you're Japanese, whether you're non-Japanese, uh, and mo most of the people here are enrolled in the international MBA program, so they debate in English. Do you have a message for our students and audience today? Yes. Um, the world is getting smaller and smaller. And in 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it will be a whole different you know, thing. Um, 10 years from now, I'll, I'll say even the Japanese company, the board meeting, uh, English will be spoken. And in 20 years, It'll be whole different things. So if you want to survive in the business community, at least you need to be able to speak English. You need to be able to work for not the Japanese company, but for the international company. I mean, the Japanese company will have to be internationalized. Otherwise, it won't be able to survive. So I think what you're doing is right. I mean, right on the track. So. I, I, I mean, you can have a high hope for it. Is there anything we can do to change Japan? Well, 
Um, don't worry about leaving Japan. I mean, if you got a better chance, you should leave Japan and take it. And if you're successful, and if you still love this country, you can come back and, uh, uh, you know, can do business in this country. I mean, if you stay in Japan, if you stay in the Japanese company, you never know beyond the horizon. So if you got a chance, you know, give up your job and you know, go abroad and try something new. I mean, while you are young, you can do it. Now, I mean, once you're like 65, it'll be very difficult to do it. So, I mean, if you got a chance, I mean, you should do it. You know, if you're in doubt, just do it. I think that's the only way to tell the limit of yourself. Please give a, a warm hand to Kono-sensei again. Thank you very much. Everybody.